Tonight, the Quinnipiac University Bobcats take on the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Hi, everybody, along with former Fairfield head coach Terry O'Connor. I'm Dave Popkin. Great to have you along. Now, Quinnipiac, the preseason favorite here in the NEC. And, uh, that's probably so because of Justin Ruddy, the reigning NEC Player of the Year. And they've played a lot better since he's re returned, Terry. They've won four of their last five. Right now, the team is just playing for playoff positioning, I think. Absolutely. Four games left, two on the road, two at home. You know, they trail Wagner by half a game. They're ahead of Mount St. Mary's and Robert Morris by one game. They want that third or fourth so they get a home game. Now, Sacred Heart, they gave Quinnipiac a scare on Wednesday, losing by only five. They were up ten in the second half in that game. They're just trying to get into the NEC tournament. Well, they want that eighth spot. They need to right that ship tonight. They need to shoot the ball better tonight than they did in the second half over at Hamden last Wednesday. Eight for 24. They only scored 20 points in the second half. Lance Brown misses, but Justin Ruddy doing his thing underneath. Well, that's what he does so well. If you don't box him out, he's going to have a great night on the board. Up by the Bobcats. Here's Deontay Twyman off to Ruddy. <laughs> Justin Ruddy, I guess he's feeling better. Missing time with the, the surgery to remove bone chips in his elbow. Greenbacker off the head fake. Nice move. That's an open three from Montez. Luis Montez shoots him at 36% from the arc. Ruddy working on Greenbacker. Good look inside. Dominique Langston. Half of the rivalry week. Going to be act winning by five. Ike Azatam hits it, and he's fouled. Akin Patetti, who just checked in. Here's Thompson's three. Good. Dominique Langston. Langston inside to Ruddy. See, in the zone defense, they're not stopping Ruddy. He's posting up. He was open about two seconds. Three. Good lead to Ruddy from Twyman. And Nick Green. And Montez. Gibson for three. Got it. Well, great patience on that trip. Down. Thompson with eight seconds left in the half. A long three. Good. Jackson to Johnson. Twyman, good ball movement. Brown, that's three. Jarrell Thompson for three. Well, Jarrell must like that top of the, the three-point line shot, Dave. That's the second one. Just that's up three with the ball. Two and a half minutes gone by, second half. Twyman for three. Got it! Spot right now. Gibson misses and put back in by Luis Montez out of Brockton. Brown turns it over and stolen right back by Twyman. Justin Ruddy. The NEC Rookie of the Week. Basket and the foul for the Bobcats. Dominique Langston foul on the Greenbackers three. Good. The big man drilling it. Just his sixth three-pointer in NEC history. Jam time. Stan Dulaire. Three-point game. James Johnson from the parking lot. Sacred Heart down by four after that Jarrell Thompson bucket. Thompson, the senior from Plainfield. Langston fakes his man in the air, takes it to the hoop. Ruddy finds Langston for two. Well, Langston, how did that go in and out? Went half halfway down and came right back out. Again, though, the athletic ability. Sacred Heart, good answer. Stan Dulaire. Yes. Johnson's three. Good! Rebound. Evans drives, hits, and one. Point game. The scoop goes for Luis Montez, looking like George Gervin. Absolutely, with the roll up there, but Luis did a great job. The defender stopped right in front of him. He didn't. Turned it over. 12 turnovers. Kelly Thompson hits it. And Sacred Heart takes their first lead of the game, 43 to 40. The entire game, Lance Brown hits it. Tough baseline jumper just catches. Johnson off to Dave Johnson. 
Lance Brown hits it again. Brown with two big baskets late for the Bobcats. They lead at 47. Thompson tried a tough pass inside. Gibson. Montez hit it! We're all tied up at 48. Lewis Montez with a shot clock running down. James Johnson for three. He got it! That's confidence in your ability to hit that shot. All perimeter. Not one interior. Look at start the foul situation. Twyman. Three on the shot clock. Here's James Johnson. The rainbow three! What a dagger. Well, two huge three threes. All perimeter game. Didn't go. What if the act comes on the road and they will win it? 55 to 48. Well, it's just an outstanding job at the end of the ball game. They took care of the basketball. The Pioneers had a couple of turnovers at the end of the ball game. That spelled the doom. And Johnson, he just had an outstanding two minutes of this ball game. Made a big difference. 13 for Ruddy, 12 for Brown, 12 for James Johnson. Quinnipiac wins it 55 48. We're back to talk about it after this. Back with you at Sacred Heart. Quinnipiac wins their 17th game of the year. They're now 9-5 and five in the league and tied with Wagner uh, for third place in the NEC. And Paul Dottino is standing by with the victors and our Ruby Tuesday player of the game. Well, we are with winning head coach Tom Moore, who we'll get to in just a second. But uh, we've got to defer to the guy who made the key shots tonight, Tom, James Johnson. Now, i got to ask you something. I saw the frustration you face at halftime. You had been 0 for 5, yeah. 1 for 13 last Wednesday against these guys. What gave you the confidence to stick those clutch threes in the final couple of minutes? Uh, I have all the confidence in myself. So every time I shoot the ball, I feel like it's going in. And coach told me to keep shooting, like, just take good shots, like, don't force anything. So I just try to get in the rhythm and, and just knock it down. Now, is there at any time, though, during the course of the game where you're thinking to defer because you know you're not feeling the shot necessarily? Not necessarily. I like to, like, when my shots are not falling, I like to focus on defense more. And hopefully my offense, I make some shots. So I don't really defer. I just, like, play defense harder. Okay, now tell me about the two clutch threes. What made those so perfect and so special? Because they went down and they were perfect. Uh, it was the ball movement and the, and the defense strong. And uh, my side was open, and so and I shot it. And luckily it went in. So it was just like a, a defensive um, like letdown. And my, I was open, and I just took the shot. Okay, so you get done with NEC Rivalry Week against uh, Sacred Heart, your Connecticut rivals. And now you only got a few games left before the NEC tournament. You yep. guys are tied with Wagner for third place. What do you have to do to kind of keep moving up? Keep playing defense, like focus on defense and practice and just keep getting better defensively and rebounding because defense was championships and, and so does rings. Rings, I mean, rebound rings, rings. So I just focus on defense and the offense will come. James Johnson, thanks for your time. Thank Best you. of luck. Our, our Ruby Tuesday player of the game. Now, Coach Tom Moore, I got to ask you, you know he's cold. You know it's not going down, and he's taking those last couple of shots there in crunch time. What are you thinking as he's releasing the ball? Are you hoping you get the rebound, or do you know it's going in? No, you know what, Paul? He's had such a good shooting season for, for a majority of the season. You know, he's had his, his uh, when Justin was out, I think defense is focused on him a little bit more. But he's such a confident kid, and I don't think anybody works harder, gets up more shots than he does. So, so I always feel good. He, he, he gives us off such good body language and confidence when he goes up. And like he mentioned to you, they both came from ball reversal, shrinking that side of the court. One time he had to shoot it anyway, obviously, because of the shot clock. But, you know, he's just got such confidence and such self-belief. He, he's There are a lot of tough kids in this league. I, I happen to think he's as tough, if not tougher, than anybody in the league. You know, we mentioned another key word, which I know you like, and that is defense. And I have to tell you, Shane Gibson, one of the leading scorers in this conference, second in this conference, had three points tonight, I think unofficially one of 11 shooting. What was the key there? We did a pretty good job on him last time from three. Uh, he's a real shot maker, and they give him a lot of offensive freedom. They set a million screens for him. When we play him, uh, James Johnson always draws the assignment, but we were switching all the dribble handoffs. And in the second half, as you could see, Sacred Heart went to that dribble weave, and so there were a lot of different guys on him. I think James Johnson did a great job in the first half. I think it was all the guards in the second half. But don't you can't short, short credit our bigs, too, as well, because they set those pin-down screens a lot for him, and we worked so hard on hedging him him coming off those and not curling. So Justin Ruddy did a good job. Jamie Jackson did a good job with that. Ike Azatam too as well. Tom Moore, I'll give you a chance to exhale. 
<laughs> I tell you what, Paul, it was like a trip to the dentist. And, and it's hard when you're talking to your team at halftime and, and, and just the shots weren't going in and you held them to 26 percent. But we had a lot of heart in the second half and, and stayed with things. I'm proud of them. Thanks, Tom. Best of luck. My pleasure, Paul. <laughs> OK, fellas, back to you. Quinnipiac wins at 55 48. We're back to put a bow on it after this. Quinnipiac wins it by seven in NEC play. Terry O'Connor, what were the keys to victory? Well, Sacred Heart, 24 turnovers. Shane, one out of 11. And then Quinnipiac, 21 points off of the turnovers and two big shots by James Johnson. That sums it up. Bobcats win at 55 to 48. Join us at midnight tonight on MSG Plus for a replay of LIU and St. Francis, an instant classic from Saturday. It was a two-point game, complete with a game-winning shot. Then Saturday, it's another NEC doubleheader, St. Francis, New York against Wagner, followed by Sacred Heart and Bryant at 2 o'clock. This telecast is a copyrighted production of the Northeast Conference and was produced in association with PS Wolf Media. For Terry O'Connor, Paul Dottino, and our entire crew, this is Dave Popkin saying so long from Fairfield, Connecticut. Quinnipiac wins it. 55 to 48. Have a great Valentine's Day, everybody. And before the ball game, Paul Dottino got a chance to sit down with the number two scorer in the Northeast Conference. Let's take a listen. Well, thanks so much, Dave. And we are with Sacred Heart's number one scorer, Shane Gibson, who you know, you got a chance at the scoring title in this league. You're one of the leading scorers in the conference. How important would that be for you to perhaps be the number one guy at the end of the year? Um, I would be lying to you if I said over the summer I didn't think about things like that, like individual accolades. But, um, yeah, it would be very important to me to win that. It would be huge considering I'm a sophomore. That would be something different. Usually it's a senior or, like, a guy who's been around for a while. I think, I think coming off of a redshirt year, for me to be the leading scorer in the league, I think that would show a huge improvement on my part, and it, it, I would be happy about it. How amazed are you that it has come so easily, so quickly for you? Because often it takes a player to their junior year before they really blossom. Um, yeah, like I said, over the summer I put in a lot of work. Um, I thought about individual stuff, but team stuff as well. And I felt like if we were going to have a chance, I would have to be the best player I could be like really quickly. I felt like I would have to um, have a huge role on our team. So that's what I th thought about in the summer. And as far as it coming quickly, uh, I'm not really, I'm just to be honest, I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not surprised because I put in a lot of work this summer. Well, hey, that's, that's what they tell you, right? You practice, you get the rewards. Yeah. Now, it's been kind of a rough year for the team, no question about that. You guys yeah. are in the lower half of the standings. I know you did not expect that. What has gone wrong, and what can you guys fix over the last few games to make sure you get into the NEC tournament? Um, well, tonight is an important game, not only for us to um, gain confidence from this win, but if we win, it'll help us towards our goal of making the playoffs. So, therefore... If we get this win, I, th I think we'll be we'll be in okay shape because the team that we needed to lose lost last game. So this win will be huge for us. Um, as far as our team, yeah, it's not what we expected. We're younger, we're a lot younger than I thought we would be. Well, we lost five seniors last year, so that's to be expected. But um, I feel like we'll make steady improvement this year. I'm not looking past this year, but we'll make steady improvement this year, and we'll be fine for the rest of the time, my time here. Now that's exactly right. You have so much more time to go. Dave Bike has been here forever. He got his 500th career win this, this past season. Uh, how important is it to have a guy like that who's so rock solid, who's so established, who knows exactly what it's all about to be your mentor? Yeah, he's been, he's been here. He's seen it all. I mean, 500 wins. Um, he's been in so many big games, 900 at least. Um, that's just experience, and he's seen everything. So we get in certain situ situations in the game. He's been there before, so he knows what has worked and what hasn't, and that's just huge for our team. And, and I look that. forward to having a coach like that. Makes you a better player, too. Yeah. Shane Gibson, th thanks so much for your time. Dave, back to you. All right, Paul, one three-pointer.